Have you ever run across a project or GitHub repository that you'd like to try out, but don't know how to get the project code from the repository and onto your ESP8266 or ESP32? No problem. In this video, I'll cover GitHub repositories, source versus compiled code, and demonstrate different ways to flash that code onto your own board, including using the newer web flashers or desktop utilities. I'll also cover some basic troubleshooting steps and even how you as a non-coder can easily compile and flash source code directly from the Arduino IDE. <laughs> Hi and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Now for many of the projects that I do here on my channel, I make the code available in a GitHub repository along with a wiki that has step-by-step -step instructions. But I found one of the most difficult steps that tend to trip up beginners and where they have issues is actually flashing that code onto their ESP board. So in today's video, I'm going to cover some of the most common methods from easiest to more advanced and also a few troubleshooting tips to help you get some custom code flashed onto your own ESP board. As always, you can find additional links to more information for anything that I show or discuss down in the video description. A few years back, the folks behind ESP Home and Home Assistant developed ESP Web Tools. This makes it very easy to install firmware, provide basic configuration, and connection to Wi-Fi all through a Chrome or Microsoft Edge browser. And as you can see, ESP Web Tools have been adopted by numerous popular firmware packages. And here you can see the web installers for three of those most popular packages, WLED, Tasmoda, and ESP Home. They all work in a very similar manner. First thing you're going to need to do is connect your ESP board to an available USB port on the computer. Now again, they all work very similar, although some of them will have options for different versions that you might want to install. But we'll just take a look at WLED here. Once I have that connected to a USB port, I just click connect or install, and it's going to prompt me for the COM port that my board's connected to. In this case, it's COM5. So I will connect that. It will communicate. All it does that, I can just install WLED and click install, and that's going to start running and installing the firmware directly onto my ESP board. Now, while that's running, it's going to take a couple of minutes. Do note that some other web tools, like Tasmoda here, actually has an option to install other firmware other than Tasmoda. But do note that I've had mixed results with that. It's really the best for installing the particular firmware it's designed for. So we'll take a look at some other ways that we can install firmware that doesn't have a web app in just a minute. But let's let this WLED install complete first. Okay, our WLED installer is wrapping up over there. And a lot of times these web installers will also allow you to just go right ahead and configure your Wi-Fi. And once you're done with that, then you're ready to go. That's all there is to installing firmware if you happen to have one of these web installers available. Unfortunately, you'll probably only find these web installers with the larger projects like WLED or Tasmoda. Because currently, for other developers like myself, if I want to make a web tool available for one of my projects, I have to have a public website, I have to build a web app, and there are a whole bunch of additional steps I'd have to complete just to make a web installer available. So there's a good possibility that you may run into firmware you'd like to use, but it doesn't have its own web installer like WLED or Tasmoda. Before moving on to some other types of utilities, there is one other web-based utility produced by Espressive itself, and it's called ESP Tool. Now, it's probably not the most user-friendly interface for flashing firmware. It can be done. Uh, again, I've had hit or miss results with this. But the ESP Tool web-based utility can be handy just to get information about your board. If I plug my ESP board into an available USB port and I connect, just like with these other utilities, we can see that this is going to read the information on the board and provide me some useful information, including the chip type and the revision number, MAC address, other things that might be useful. And there's one other utility on here that I use fairly often, and that is simply to erase the flash. Anytime you're going to reuse a board or maybe put different firmware on it, it's always a good idea to erase the flash. Yes, you can sometimes do that with other installers, but I always like to just erase my chips here when I'm done using them before I store them so I know they're ready to go for the next use. So keep ESP tools in your back pocket. It can sometimes be a really handy utility. And again, it does give you the option to choose and flash firmware from here, but my experience has been hit or miss. So while many mainline firmware applications like WLED and Tasmoda provide a handy web installer, 
you're likely to find many, many more projects on GitHub and elsewhere that don't have a custom web installer. So how do you get these onto your ESP board? Well, those steps may vary slightly based on the language and the type of firmware you're using. For example, if you're using something like MicroPython or CircuitPython, you first have to install Python onto the ESP, then the application itself. There are many guides online for how to do that, but a lot of the firmware you're going to run into for the ESP is going to be Arduino or C++ based, so that's what I'm going to focus on here. If you do come across a repository with firmware or an application you'd like to try and they don't offer one of those fancy web installers, the very first step is to please read the documentation. Please! I don't know how many questions I've answered or problems I've helped resolve that wouldn't have occurred if the provided instructions had just been followed. Now, some developers provide information right in the main readme file of the repository. Others, like many of my repos, actually have a full wiki. But please at least look through the documentation before beginning. One of the first things you're going to do is assure that the firmware is compatible with the hardware you're planning on using. As you can see here, this particular firmware is written to only work with the ESP8266. It does note that it might work with an ESP32, but you'd actually have to modify the source code yourself to be able to do that. Let me try switching to a different project. This repository, on the other hand, supports both the ESP8266 and the ESP32. But note that right here in bold, it says installation and configuration instructions are in the wiki. But also notice this next line. To just install the firmware, you only need to download the appropriate compiled binary file or .bin file from the releases page. So let's jump over to the latest release for this repository and take a look. For this repository, the latest version has some release notes and information based on whether this is your first install or an upgrade. But at the bottom, under Assets, you can see the compiled binary libraries, one for the ESP8266 and one for the ESP32. Now you only need the appropriate binary file for your board type if you're, all you're wanting to do is install the firmware. You don't need the source code or any other files just to flash the firmware unless you plan on modifying them first. In fact, that's one of the most common mistakes I see some beginners make. They download the entire repository as a zip or a tar file, then they open that up, go in, find the source code file, find the actual INO source code, and they try to flash that to the ESP board. Now, it'll flash, but it won't run. When it comes to Arduino C++ programs, the source code has to be compiled into an executable binary or bin file before it will run on the ESP board. But what if a compiled version isn't provided? I'll get to that in just a bit. But first, let's look at flashing a compiled binary to an ESP. Back over here on the latest releases page, I'll scroll down to the assets, and I'm going to download and save the compiled binary for an ESP32, and I'm just going to save it to my local PC for now. And that's all I really need from this particular repository at this point. But without a web installer, we still need to get that firmware flashed onto the ESP board. There are a number of desktop utilities available out there, but two of the most common in the way we used to have to flash WLED and TASMODA before the web installers are Node MCU Pi Flasher and ESP Home Flasher that despite its name does not mean that you have to be a home assistant or ESP home user to use the flasher. Both utilities are easy to download and run. Node MCU Pi Flasher has versions for Windows and Mac and the ESP Home Flasher has versions for Windows, Mac and Linux. Here I actually have both utilities running side by side, Node MCU Pi Flasher on the left and ESP Home Flasher, which you can see is actually based on the Node MCU Pi Flasher here on the right. A Node MCU Pi Flasher has some additional options, so check the documentation for your firmware to see if there are any specific flashing requirements. Both work in an almost identical manner. For this example, I'm going to use the simpler ESP Home Flasher to install that binary file I just downloaded onto my ESP32. Just like the web installers, I need to connect the ESP to an available USB port on the computer. I can then select the new COM port that appears when the ESP is connected. Note that if you do not see a new COM port, then you may not have the appropriate USB to serial drivers installed on your machine. Most modern Windows and Mac machines will already have these drivers, but if they are missing on your machine, check out the video description where I'll leave links on how to get and install these drivers. Once the right COM port is selected, simply browse to and select the binary file for the firmware you want to install and click the flash button. If you get a communication error when using the COM port and you're using an ESP32, note that some ESP boards need to be placed into flash mode before they'll accept new firmware. 
Simply press and hold this boot button while you power cycle the ESP32, then release the boot button. In some rare cases, you may need to hold the boot button down until a connection is established, then you can release the button. Now watch this output as the firmware is written. When it is complete, some utilities will automatically reset the board and begin ex executing your new firmware. In cases of other utilities, you may need to manually recycle the board to put it back into normal operation. And depending upon the firmware, you may also receive some additional output in the logs. But how do you really know if the firmware actually installed correctly and is running as planned? If you can see the logs, there is one thing to watch out for, and it's what you see happening here with the different ESP board I've connected. You can see the same reset message appearing over and over. You may also notice rapid blinking or intermittent flashing of the LED on the ESP. This is a sure sign that the board is in a boot loop or restarting over and over. This is usually due to a corrupted, incomplete, or incompatible flash. Now you can try flashing again with the same utility or try a different utility. I found that some utilities work better with particular firmware than another. And here I've reconnected my original board I just flashed and I'm not seeing a boot loop. And you may not see any log output depending upon the firmware. So how do you know if the firmware is working as planned or properly? Again, go back to the documentation. Is there any info that would let you know if the firmware is working or not? In the case of the firmware I just flashed, the documentation says a hotspot should be broadcasting for Wi-Fi setup. If I check my phone, sure enough, I see this hotspot. This lets me know the firmware is running successfully on my ESP board. But what if none of these desktop utilities are able to successfully flash your firmware? Or what if the repo only offers a source code and not a compiled binary? Well, while it does take a little bit more upfront work, you can use the Arduino IDE to not only verify that the code works with your particular board, but to compile and flash that code to the ESP as well. In some cases, it may also be necessary to make some small changes to that code, like specifying your Wi-Fi credentials, if the project doesn't offer any kind of Wi-Fi onboarding. Don't worry, the Arduino IDE is completely free and can be used on Windows, Mac, or Linux. As I mentioned, yes, there's a little bit of configuration that needs to be done up front to get the Arduino IDE to work with the ESP boards. But if you haven't done this before, I have a step-by-step -step video of how to do all that setup, along with examples of how to compile and flash code to both the ESP8266 and the ESP32. You absolutely do not need to be a programmer or know how to write code to use this method. But since that other video does cover all the step-by-step -step processes of how to use the Arduino IDE to compile and flash firmware, I'm not going to go over that here. You can watch that video after this one. I'm only going to provide a quick demo and a few additional tips if you need to compile your own source code because you cannot get a valid flash of the provided bin file with one of the desktop utilities. First, to use the IDE, you do need to have the source code for the project you want to use. Now, in most cases, you can simply come up here to the code button and you can download a zip, which would include everything in the repository. In this particular case, that includes Home Assistant examples, the PCB design files, the STL 3D printed design files, the license, the README, everything would be included in that zip file. And after you download it, you would have to open that zip file, go in, locate and extract the source code files for your Arduino IDE. Alternatively, most repositories will have all the source code normally located in one folder. The most common folder name is SRC, as you see here, but that's not required. Inside the source code folder, you will normally find everything that you need, but check the documentation because there may be additional files here, like a readme file that we don't need. The main source code file will generally be an INO file, but you may see other things like header files, libraries, or other subfolders that, that might be needed. Here's another project repository, and I'll use this one to actually download the source code, compile, and flash as an example for using the IDE. Again, inside the source folder, I can see a number of files, including a readme, a .h, and a .ino file. If I look at the documentation, it tells me that both the h and the ino files are required. In my Arduino sketch folder location on my local machine, I create a folder with the same name as the primary .ino file, parking underscore assistant in this case. For each source code file, I simply select it and I can use the download raw file button to save it to my folder. Once I have all the required source code files downloaded, you can launch the Arduino IDE. Here in the Arduino Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, open that primary INO file for the project. 
I note that the ID is smart enough to also open any other files included in this folder, an H file in this case. But once the project is open, the IDE will likely default to a particular board type. The first thing to do is check this list and change the board to which you're trying to flash the firmware. Note at this point, I don't care about the port. I don't even have a board connected yet. All I'm trying to do is verify that the code will compile for my board type. Just as an example, I'm going to select an Arduino Nano board here, just because I know it isn't compatible. Once my board is selected, I can use the check mark or the verify button to check the code for my board. As you can see, I get an error. Now at this point, I can either change to a compatible board, or I would need to try to modify the source code to make it work with my board, which might not even be possible. As the documentation stated, and it's even repeat, repeated here at the top of the source code, this firmware is for the ESP8266 or ESP32 and probably would never run on the Nano. So let's say I'm actually using a Wemos D1 Mini for my build. Under boards, I'm going to go back, I'm going to search for Wemos, and here's my D1 Mini, so I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to verify again. This time it's going to recompile for the code base for a Wemos D1 Mini. And this time the verification completed without error. If you do get any errors, you will need to resolve those. The firmware will never work until these are resolved. It could be that the firmware just doesn't work with a particular board. Again, check the firmware's documentation, and you might also check to see if there are any known issues listed. As you can see from the issues for this particular firmware, it is known not to work with some of the newer D1 Mini boards. Now you may be able to read the details of an issue to see if there is a workaround. In fact, it's not a bad idea to browse through the open issues of a repo before you try to use it. Back over to my demo, in this particular case, I'm actually going to flash this onto a Wemos ESP32 Mini. So I will go down here, I will select that board, and I will go ahead and re-verify my code for the new board. Now that I have a successful compile for this particular board, I'm actually ready to flash it to my ESP32. So I go ahead and connect my ESP32 to a USB port, just like with any other utility. But now I come in here to select the board, and I also need to select the COM port. Here's the new COM port that was found, so I will select that. And now this becomes bold because it's connected and I'm ready to go. Now I can click the upload button. What this is going to do behind the scenes is going to recompile, create that binary code, and actually flash it over to my ESP32. Hey, the compile binary is now installed on my board just as it would have been if I had flashed a bin file using one of those desktop utilities, except in this case, I was able to create a binary file compiled from my particular board and type. In some cases, this may be all it takes to resolve one of those boot loop errors you may have received from one of the other desktop utilities that may have been due to small differences in the underlying board definition. So in most situations, as long as you have compatible hardware and you've read the documentation, you did read the documentation, right? You should be able to use one of these methods to successfully get the firmware onto your ESP board. And just remember, if one method doesn't work, try another. For some reason, particular utilities work better with some firmware than the others. I have one repo out there, my robot race car timer, that flashes just fine with the ESP home flasher, but results in a boot loop when I flash it with Node MCU Pi flasher but the Arduino IDE always works in every case. If you do run into an error that you can't resolve, don't give up. If it's from a GitHub repo, look at the potential issues. Maybe someone else is having the same problem. Or reach out to one of the social media sites such as Discord and see if you can get a resolution there. It might be a situation where you found a new issue that needs to be posted and addressed by the developer. Hopefully I've provided you some tips on how to flash custom firmware to your ESP board. I'll be back soon with more videos on DIY electronics, LED projects, and home automation. But until that time, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.